and welcome back to the show. The International Center is the ESOL Department of Catholic Charities Community Services in New York City and offers English language classes, cultural programs, and social services to immigrants, refugees, students, and other newcomers to the United States each year. Now, with the help of volunteers, their programs welcome hundreds of learners from all backgrounds, cultures, and identities. Sharing with us now and giving us more details, we're pleased to have the director of the International Center, Elaine Roberts. And uh, Elaine, good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. And so as we talk about the work of your organization, obviously a lot is paid towards uh, immigration as well as social services. Uh, given the fact of where we are today in this COVID pandemic, I know that the need for immigration services is probably greatly increased. Yes, yes. And it's become um, more difficult for some students to access services. So we've had to shift the way that we provide our services. Um, we a lot of it is still online right now. And so we're not only providing ESOL classes, English um, practice, English conversation, but also digital skills. That's become a, a huge part of the work that we're doing. We have to help students connect to the classes and the services digitally. Yeah, and so there has to be a little bit of a challenge when you talk about digital services. We know that a lot of people who already have access, Americans and New Yorkers are struggling every day uh, with sometimes broadband internet access, access to uh, devices to be able to connect them because we are in this virtual space. What kind of challenges are you enc encountering? So um, two types. So the skills, a lot of students are not familiar with um, using their phone. A lot of students don't have laptops, so they're doing a lot of classes on their phone and they're not familiar with using their phone as a computer and connecting via Zoom. Um, and then Secondarily, a lot of students have connection issues, so they might only be able to take classes for a couple of weeks, then their data runs out for the month, so they have to stop. A lot of students don't have Wi-Fi at home. Um, and then kind of related to both of those issues, security, kind of safety and security online in WhatsApp, in Zoom, in email, students have a lot of questions. So we, um, to complement the ESOL programming, we've been doing um, digital skills workshop series online with students so they can ask these questions, they can get this help, they can feel more confident using um, using their phone, connecting um, remotely to people. Yeah. And so you have several programs under your umbrella that you really have geared to uh, meeting students right where they are. Give me a little bit about uh, your community English programs. Yes. So we have, um, right now we have three community English programs in the Bronx. Um, one is based around a parish in the South Bronx, St. Rita's, and the um, students in that community actually came to the church and said they needed assistance. They wanted to learn English. The church connected with us and we came into the community and we provided um, the classes. And it's a great, it's a great um, community to work with because people know each other, they're supporting each other outside of class. If someone doesn't come, their friend reaches out and reminds them, hey, you signed up for class, we should go. So it's it's a really um, strong group of students that are working together. Not far away um, from that community on um, around 138th Street, we also have a program for the day laborers, the day laborer population in the South Bronx. So the folks you know that are waiting for work each day, temporary work, maybe in landscaping or in construction. We do classes in the evening for those um, students as well. And it is, we actually expected it would be a lot of men, but it's actually a mix of men and women together. Um, people from many different countries, many different backgrounds, and they're all trying to learn the English that they can use in their jobs. So negotiation, yeah. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about that intimidation factor, because when somebody comes from another country and they come into a country, I mean, I remember going uh, to foreign countries and playing basketball and not knowing the language, not knowing the culture. Uh, there is that cultural barrier that so many of them have to face in terms of trying to acclimate. So give us what that feels like uh, from your perspective for them and the amount of you know work that has to go in to really readying them and preparing them and getting them acclimated to a culture that sometimes they're not so familiar with. Yes, and that's very different maybe from their culture. So. Some things that we've encountered with students, um, the types of questions that you can ask, right? In the US, we might not generally ask someone about their salary or about who they voted for. So we talk to them about kind of what's what's culturally 
acceptable in the US? What types of questions can you ask? Also, eye contact. A lot of our students, you know, they might come from a culture where to show respect, you don't make eye contact, right? You look down. So we have to talk to them, especially when you're at the job where you're talking to someone that you want to work with, a, a boss maybe. It shows, it shows trustworthiness, right? To make eye contact. So that type of work, but also um, the way we teach and what we talk about in the classroom is very much um, representative of, of American culture or New York culture. So um, the way the teachers interact with the students, you know, using first names, we want to show them kind of the, the culture here, what they might encounter on the job. And teachers will weave in, if a student brings up a, a problem from the job, maybe um, a difficulty with pay, maybe there were extra hours and they weren't compensated, and they're not sure what to do. That can be woven into the class. The teacher can talk about that. How do you politely disagree with someone? How do you do that? Um, and that can be really hard for students to, to know exactly the right word to use that's, that's appropriate, but not insulting or not rude. Yeah, also, we know about legal services, and that's pretty huge as well. Talk to yeah. us about uh, the fact of what you're seeing with regards to legal services. Uh, is there an increase, particularly with COVID? I know that uh, homelessness and dealing with housing has been a big issue for everybody across the community. Talk to us about the legal services and what you're saying. So we have a Catholic Charities has a um, office in the South Bronx on 152nd Street. We have a big legal office there. A lot of staff working on folks applying to become citizens, right? So they, maybe they've been here long enough, five years, they want to make the application. They do all types of um, cases and we also have a, a partnership with Montefiore Medical Center in the South Bronx, um, a program called Terra Firma, which is a medical legal partnership with Montefiore. And the legal staff there are providing legal services and consultations for folks who are in that community. Um, some of them have been here for a while. Some of them are very newly arrived. A wide range of issues, but definitely a consistent amount of issues. Um, Folks, for the past couple of years, I think the legal landscape was shifting and there were some changes. So we have a lot of clients who have questions. What does this mean for me? What, what can I do? Can I change um, my situation? Um, but I will say my colleagues handle the um, legal services. Mm -hmm. So I, I handle the education piece and I have colleagues in the legal department. And before we get ready to go, I just want to get an opportunity for you to be able to share who's actually eligible, who can come under your umbrella to receive services. So for our English classes, anyone, anyone who wants to learn is welcome. Um, we welcome, we have no requirements about status or um, length of time in the U.S. or, or background. So we welcome everyone. Um, the, I believe the same is true for the other, for the other community services provided in the South Bronx. We have a food hub on at our office at 152nd. Um, but what I would recommend for anyone who's interested, I can share um, website, phone number, and then Catholic Charities has a helpline um, that we can that we can share with anyone who's interested. So if it's a question about legal services, a question about um, food, about shelter, about rent, um, they can direct them to the right place. Elaine, I want to thank you so much for being with us. She is the director of the International Center. And as always, you, she will share those things with us and we'll be able to share them with you. And want to let you know also, if you want more information, don't hesitate to visit the website, newintlcenter.org. There you can find out more information. Of course, we'll have some to share with you as well. We are taking a quick break. I want you to be uh, stay with us here on Open. And Elaine, again, thank you for joining us.